Hi there, I'm Richard Pidgeley and I'm the lead pastor at Millpool Hill Church in Birmingham. And uh, thank you so much for choosing to watch this video message today. Today I want to talk about all things being possible with God. All things are possible. In 1999, I know it was a long time ago now for some of us, but back in 1999, a young lady who was a worship pastor at Hillsong in Australia, Darlene Czech, wrote a lovely song and it was called All Things Are Possible. Some of the words went like this, Almighty God, my Redeemer, my hiding place, my safe refuge, no other name like Jesus. No power can stand against you. For when I'm weak, you make me strong. When I'm poor, I know I am rich. For in the power of your name, all things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. Now, at this time, Hillsong Church were consistently writing and releasing new, fresh expressions of praise and worship that actually influenced the worship style of the global church at that time. And they helped millions of Christians to reach out to God in heartfelt and passionate worship. I instantly loved that song, All Things Are Possible. Not just because it had a great worship sound, a great music sound, uh, but because the words clearly declared that God specialises in the miraculous. And when we are going to be together again in the near future, I am looking forward to singing along with everybody else at Millpool Hill Church songs that clearly um, sound out the greatness of God, songs that clearly proclaim the might and the majesty and the power and the glory of our God, songs that lift up the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. All things are possible and soon we will be singing again in what we call the house of God. Nothing is impossible with God. In Genesis 18 verse 14, God is speaking to Abraham and God says, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? And then in Numbers chapter 11 verse 23, the Lord says to Moses, has my arm lost its power. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Has God got a limit on his power? Has his arm grown tired over the years of time? Is there some kind of limitation on what God can actually do in the world and the universe that he created? Well, the Bible tells us that God works mighty miracles in and through his people. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, one of the probably most well-known Bible verses and certainly one of my favourite Bible verses, we read, Now glory be to God by his mighty power at work within us, that's where God's power is working in by his mighty power that works deep inside of our lives. He is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare to ask or hope. God has already, I know for a fact, worked his miracle working power in my life. I was once lost and far away from God. My life was pretty miserable and empty. I was held prisoner, as it were, to all sorts of terrible, dark addictions and things that were so unholy and unrighteous, things that had wrecked my life and even caused me to find myself in a prison cell. And yet God's grace worked in my life and God did something miraculous. He gave me a brand new life 
in Jesus and what he did for me. He's done for millions of people around the world, um, not only now in our generation, but in all the generations before us, right back to the time of Jesus' death and resurrection. God does miracle miracles and miracles and miracles and more miracles in the lives of ordinary people, just like you and me, when we put our trust in him and receive Christ as our saviour. Now, God is able to do infinitely more than we can think or ask. Is there a limit to his power? Well, the answer to that is, of course not. God is sovereign. God is mighty. God is able to do so much more than we could ask or think. He is able. There is no limit to his power and his right arm of power, as it were, has not lost any strength. It's not diminished in glory throughout the years. God will always be powerful. He always was. He is today and he always will be the God of power and glory, the God of the miraculous. With God, all things are possible. Now, God often does the impossible, first of all, when there is a need. When Israel was trapped in bondage and captivity in the land of Egypt, there was a need. And so God miraculously brought them to freedom. When Israel was then led out of the land of Egypt and then trapped at the Red Sea, the sea before them, the, the Egyptian army coming behind them, ready to capture them again, God miraculously gave them deliverance. What was impossible became possible when God opened up the Red Sea and made a way where there seemed to be no way. And maybe you feel you're in an impossible situation right now. I tell you, the God who opened the Red Sea can open up ways before you right now. He can provide a job for you. He can open up doors for you. He can set people free. He can do anything because with God, all things are possible. When Israel was dying of thirst in the desert, God miraculously made a way where there seemed to be no way, where there was a rock and um, suddenly coming out of a rock was this amazing fresh water to refresh and give life to the Israelites. When Israel was undecided about God uh, and they needed help in determining you know, who they would serve, either God or false gods, Elijah the prophet called down fire from heaven uh, and God consumed the sacrifice miraculously. God was able to do something that seemed to be impossible. Uh, Elijah had prepared a big sacrifice and poured water all over it. And there was no way, naturally speaking, that the wood would uh, light uh, and be ignited. And yet God lit the sacrifice by sending fire from himself in heaven. God can do the impossible. There is no limit to his power. When Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were hurled into a fiery furnace, God leapt from heaven in the form of his son, the Lord Jesus, and walked in the flames with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. The fire that would have normally cremated them in seconds didn't harm them. And when they came out of the fire, there wasn't even the smell of a barbecue smoke on them. That is the God of miracles working through his people. When there is a need, God is able to do the impossible. When Daniel was in the lion's den uh, and the lions were hungry and wanting to eat Daniel for supper, I tell you, there was a need and God sent an angel and shut the mouths of the lions. And I could go on and on and, and give you many other miracles from the Bible where God is clearly demonstrating that with him, all things are possible. But we see there is a clear pattern. When there is a need, God often steps in and meets that need. And that's why the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, um, and Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, and he says, my God shall supply all your needs, not your wants, but your needs. When you've got a genuine need, God is able 
to step in and to do for you what nobody else can do. He specializes in the miraculous. God can do the impossible and God can turn situations around to bring blessing into your life. And in doing it, it gives him great delight as well. Have you got needs? Are you listening today with needs that might be spiritual, maybe financial, maybe physical, maybe even emotional? I guess at times we all have needs. But the good news is this, God's power has not diminished. He is the God who can do the impossible. What is impossible, he can make possible. He can meet your need according to his riches and glory through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So put your faith in him today. Be at peace and be ready to receive that miracle. You say it's impossible, but Jesus says all things are possible, only believe. When I needed uh, a visa to go to America several years ago, the American embassy told me that I wasn't eligible to travel to America because of my past misdemeanors. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't able to go to America. And that meant I couldn't celebrate uh, with my wife the wedding of my eldest son. And uh, that was a, a great heartache. And I can remember crying about it and thinking, what can I do? But we prayed and the church prayed and friends prayed. And uh, what would normally be a very long process to get a visa literally happened in just a few weeks. From the point of being told, no, you can't go to America. We're sorry, you won't be there to celebrate with your son when he gets married. From that point, just a few weeks down the line, we were told by the American embassy that we could go or I could go to America and be with my family at that time. You see, God can take the impossible and make it possible. Where there is a need, God can make a way. And I don't know what you're facing right now, but I know this, God can make a way. I know that what seems impossible right now, God can turn around and make it possible. Jesus said, only believe. And I want to encourage you today to use your faith and to stand in faith and to be at peace and to know that although there's a storm raging around you right now in different ways, that God is able to bring you through the storm. He is able to make a way where there seems to be no way, where things seem so hard at the moment and you can't kind of go forward. God can move mountains and he can cause the mountain to literally split open with a river water coming out to bless you. God is in the business of blessing his people. Only believe. God can do anything. He can refresh you. He can remove sickness. He can restore your joy. He can restore your peace as well. He can even restore sons and daughters that are far away from him at this time. God can do the impossible when there's a need. He can also do the impossible when we respond to him in faith. We need to believe that God can do anything. He can save people. He can heal people. He can bring deliverance into our lives. Yes, God can do anything. We need to believe that. What is the basis of our faith on that? Well, the Bible clearly tells us time and time again that our God is the God of salvation, the God of miracles, the God of deliverance, the God who can take the impossible and make it possible for his glory. We need to believe that. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said, What do you mean, if I can? And then he went on to say, Anything is possible if a person believes. We need divine faith. Or maybe better said, we need to have our faith that is rock sure and steady in God Almighty. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, we, we all have a measure of faith. That's right. I've got a measure of faith and you've got a measure of faith as well. Maybe we feel our faith is really big and, and, and maybe we might feel today it's really tiny. But we've all got a measure of faith. That's what the Bible teaches in Romans 12. 
But I'm a great believer in the fact that we can increase or we can grow or maximize that measure of faith that God has deposited into our hearts. Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And basically what that means is we can develop our faith, we can grow our faith, we can maximize our measure of faith by hearing the word of God. How do we do that? Well, we open up our Bibles and we begin to read the word of God. We do it regularly, we do it prayerfully. And as we do that, as we read the word of God, we often see how God has interacted with men and women and boys and girls in the past. We see that God has done miraculous things for other people. We see that God makes ways where there seems to be no way. We see where God provides when it seems to be an impossible situation. And as we see how God has moved in the past, we realize and understand that he is the same yesterday today and forever. And something happens. You see, the Bible is supernatural. It's God's word. And as we read the Bible, something happens deep down in our hearts. Our faith begins to grow. And it's just like we begin to understand if God could do it for David, if God could do it for Esther, if God could do it for Elijah, if God could do it for Samuel, if God could do it for this person in the Bible, he can do it for me. The God that came in for those saints of the past is the same God today that can come in for you. God can turn things around. And so as we read the Bible, faith begins to grow and develop in us. The Bible says we need to use our faith. In the book of James, it says faith without works is dead. So that means we need to trust in God. It means we need to listen to what he's saying. And then as he leads us according to his perfect plan for our lives, his sovereign will, we need to follow that and put into practice what God is saying in the Bible. If God says love people, we need to love people. If God says we need to worship him um, and bring our sacrifice of praise, we need to do that. If God says that we should fellowship together, we should come together and we're doing that right now online. If God says that we should forgive others, even as he has forgiven us for our sins, when we need to forgive others. If God says we should give generously, we should give generously and so on. And as we do these things, we are beginning to work out our faith. We're beginning to do things and our actions will glorify God. But also as we do these things, our faith is getting stronger and stronger all the time. In Joshua chapter one, God told his people to cross the Jordan and to enter the promised land. Um, in John chapter two, the servants at Cana were told to pour out some, some water into some big stone jars um, and then um, to do what they were told to do really by Jesus. They'd run out of wine and, and you know, Jesus said, here, take some water and put it in those stone jars. Uh, and then in Luke chapter five, Jesus told Simon to uh, let down his net. Simon, the fisherman, had uh, been fishing all night and he'd caught nothing. Jesus or, or God the Father was telling people at different times to do different things. And we see that when people listen to what God tells them to do and that they actually apply it, that's them putting their faith into action. And when they put their faith into action, the Bible says that the people of God literally crossed over the, the River Jordan uh, and then they went into the promised land and they inherited the blessings of God. When the servants at Cana poured the water into the stone jars, then took some out and gave it to the chief of the feast, it turned miraculously into wine. And when Peter let down his nets, he had such a catch of fish, it almost threatened to sink his boat. Wow, God is the God who can turn things around. He is the God of the miraculous. God is the God that can take the impossible and make it possible. And all we need to do is believe and step out in him on faith. What is God telling you to do 
today. Well, we need to hear God and we need to obey him. And I think God moves often when I see and read the Bible. God moves not only when there is a need, not only when we stand in faith on his word, but also when we're clear channels, pure channels, clean channels. You see, nobody likes to use dirty things. We're going to have lunch in just a few moments. And um, if I prepare lunch for Lynn and, and myself and then um, put the food on a plate and serve it to her and give her a dirty knife and fork, you know, a knife and fork that's got egg yolk dried on it from the meal before. Um, I don't think Lynn would want to use that knife and fork. I certainly wouldn't want to. And if you went to visit somebody, not that we're allowed to at the moment, and they offered you a cup of tea and you saw them pouring the tea into a dirty stained cup, you wouldn't want to drink from that cup either. And in the same way, why would God Almighty want to pour his goodness and his power and his presence and blessing into something that is clearly dirty and not nice to use? Of course, God wouldn't want to do that. That's why it says in Leviticus chapter 11, I am the Lord your God. You must be holy just as I am holy. And so without holiness, without being sanctified, that means separated from the things that defile us in this life to the holiness of God, without making that conscious separation to be close to God and taking things out of our lives that defile us, we can't cross over into all that God has for us. In the book of Joshua, God told the people in the early chapters of Joshua that they had to separate from the things that defiled them. They had to be sanctified. They had to make that conscious decision to make sure their lives were clean before God, before God could take them and use them in crossing over the Jordan, taking the city of Jericho and then going forward into the land of milk and honey, the land of promise, the land of blessing. The people had to be sanctified. They had to be clean, not only on the outside, but also on the inside. And sanctification Although it's a theological word, a deep Bible word, it means to be more and more like Jesus. I thank God today that although at times I mess up in my Christian life, I thank God today that although there are times when I get it wrong, I say things I shouldn't say. Maybe sometimes I laugh at things I shouldn't laugh at. And, you know, we all fall for this at times. Although I sometimes get it wrong, just like everybody else. I thank God that I can come back to my Father in heaven and say sorry. And the Bible says in 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 9, that if we confess our sin, if we confess to God, if we tell God that we've got it wrong and we're genuinely sorry and we're making an effort to put it right, God will forgive us our sin and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hey, God can do the impossible, but he's looking for pure channels. He's looking for people that will have a heart that is after his heart. So if you want God to do something amazing in your life, make sure your heart is right before him. And finally, God can do the impossible when we are available to him. When we make ourselves available to God, amazing things can happen. Why? Because with God, all things are possible. David made his little sling available to God. And as a result of that, David brought down the giant that was defying the armies of God. And the rest is history. Elisha touched Elijah uh, and then uh, touched by Elijah, then made himself available to God. He said goodbye to his farming days and said, God, here, here I am. You can have all of me. And God used Elisha in an incredible way and gave him a double portion of his spirit. When the little lad made his loaves and fish available to Jesus, the rest is history. Jesus fed thousands from that little picnic lunch. When William Booth made himself available to God, the rest is history. For God took hold of a simple man, an ordinary man called William Booth, 
and caused him to start the Salvation Army, uh, a part of a church that has literally gone all around the world, helping people in distress, helping people that are overcome by all sorts of addictions and brokenness. God took hold of that man, William Booth, and started a movement that has swept around the world, bringing blessing literally to thousands upon thousands of people. And the list goes on and on and on. But the truth of the matter is this. You see, God is not so much interested in your ability, the things you can do. No, he's more interested in your availability. The Apostle Paul led one of the most exciting and dynamic of Christian lives. Um, But we read that he put aside his personal agenda He laid all that to one side. He counted his life and all the things he had achieved as dung, really, compared to the knowledge of knowing Christ. And Paul was able to write these incredible words in Romans chapter 12. I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will accept. When you think of what he has done for you, is that really too much to ask? Yes, Paul realised that for the glory and the power and the splendour and the majesty and the very dynamic presence of God to flow for our lives, we have to make ourselves available to him. That's why Paul said, give your life to God as a living sacrifice. And when we do that, the fire of God can fall. Hey, the fire of God never falls on an empty altar. We need to be that sacrifice. We need to trust God and give him back our very lives and let God do with our lives what he feels is best. Hey, with God, all things are possible. And if you want that best kind of life, I would encourage you, give your life to God. I I never dreamed that I would travel to about 23 nations of the world, including America and Australia and South Africa and India. And it's just been an incredible life that I've had since I've met Jesus. I never dreamed that I would travel to all those countries and tell other people about the love of God. In, In about 23 countries or so, I have had the privilege of telling people that I've met and in personal conversations and even preaching that there is a God in heaven who loves them. It's been an incredible privilege. I never thought that I would be an author of a book called Seriously Rich. I I never dreamt that I would be a church pastor. And here I am at Millpool Hill Church in Birmingham. I never dreamt that I would have such an exciting, wonderful, fulfilling Christian life. But it all started when I made myself available to Jesus Christ. I can remember very early on in my Christian experience, kneeling down and saying, Jesus, you can have all there is of me. And in that simple prayer of consecration, of giving myself back to God, God took that and he has used it. And where there have been impossible situations in my life, God has made all things possible through his presence and his power and his glory. We just need to trust God and make ourselves available to him. God can do absolutely anything. And I'll finish with this. With God, all things are possible. He can give you a brand new life in Jesus Christ. He can remove your shameful past. He can fill your emptiness with his goodness and satisfy your soul like no one else. He can turn your darkness into light. He can turn captivity and addiction into freedom. He can give you the best possible life ever. He can even give you that deep assurance of heaven in your soul. And all you have to do is just only believe. Turn from your sin. Make a decision that you won't live independently from God any longer. Trust that Christ died for you upon the cross. Trust that he died so that you could be forgiven and restored to a loving father. Tell God through prayer 
that you want Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Saviour. Hey, if you only believe today, that kind of life that seems impossible, the life that we would all dream about, the best possible life, can be possible when you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you only believe in Jesus today, all things can be possible. So God is able to work in and through us his miraculous power. With God, all things are possible. And the Bible clearly tells us that these things become possible often when we have a need. For God is good and he will meet our needs. God will do the impossible when we respond to him in faith. God will do the impossible when we are pure channels for him to use. God will do the impossible when we give of ourselves to him. We make ourselves available. With God, all things are possible. I hope that this message has encouraged you. I hope that it's blessed you and inspired you. But until next time, may God bless you and may he keep you.